Dr. Ken here with you with Electronic Piece of Lesson 5, our exercise tutorials. So let's see how well our learning has been going. So if you don't already know how these work, step one, I'm going to pose the exercise question. You pause the video and attempt the question. Step two, continue to play the video. I'll provide you with a hint, gives you a little bit of assistance. Again, pause the video, complete the exercise. Step three, continue to play the video. I'll provide you the answer. Not only that, I'll give you the explanation to why it is the answer. And then we'll continue the video to the next question and continue it. So on and so forth. So our first question is question one. The effect known as back EMF when a magnetic field collapses is called what? A. Ohm's law. B. Faraday's law. C. Lenz's law or D Kirchhoff's law. So pause here. Here's the hint. Which options have to do with magnetism and which don't? Can you kind of filter them out if you don't know the answer? So here's the answer. The answer is Lenz's law. So A, Ohm's law only has to do with voltages, resistances and currents. Faraday's law, that applies to um, some things we do in electromagnetism, but it doesn't apply to EMF or back EMF. The correct answer was Lenz's law and of course Kirchhoff's law. We've got Kirchhoff's current laws and voltage laws, but again, nothing to do with magnetism. So Lenz's law states that when a magnetic field collapses it will establish a current in the opposite direction to that which originally established that magnetic field that collapsing. Question 2. If a voltage is applied to a coil an EMF is induced in the coil. The induced EMF is called what? A mutual inductance EMF, left-hand rule EMF, self-induced EMF, or D, inductive EMF. So again, pause here. The hint is, list the different induction types and see so you can line them up with which is the correct answer if you don't already know. So it was self-induced EMF, mutual induction EMF is a, is a real thing, but uh, it has to do with how it interacts with other coils. No such thing as left-hand rule EMF, and inductive EMF is like saying inductive, inductive, or EMF, EMF. Question three, a non-inductive coil is produced by what? A non-inductive coil. A, using air cord coil, B, using a bifilia winding, C, using a non-magnetic winding, or D, using small cross-sectional area conductors. So pause here while you think about it. Here's the hint. Non-induction is produced when two coils cancel each other in the way they have been wound. So which one of these would, might apply to this? The answer is bifilial. And I'll show how that works. And if we wind a inductor, say clockwise, like this, and then we get to the end, and then we wind over the top the same number of turns and clockwise in the opposite direction this time, but it's all the one coil, then the two magnetic fields will cancel each other out and you'll have a coil, which is non-inductive. Question four. If the flux produced by one coil cuts an adjacent coil and the EMF induced in the second coil. So what's that effect called when that happens? 
Do we call it mutual inductance? Do we call it self-inductance? Do we call it right-hand rule inductance? Or D, do we call it coil impedance? So pause here. Here's your hint. If you remember, when we were explaining how transformers work, this is how transformers work. So what kind of inductance operates a transformer? The answer is mutual inductance. There is such a thing as B, self-inductance, but that's not the one, obviously. C, right-hand rule inductance, doesn't exist. And all coils have impedance. And that does relate to the kind of inductor it is, but it's not the effect. So mutual inductance is the effect that we were after. Question five. Mutual induction is defined as the magnetic linkages between what? The original coil and the flux, any number of adjacent coils, an inductor and a resistor, or D, the flux and the magnetic core. So A, B, C, or D. Pause here. Here's your hint. Again, this is how a transform works. It's mutual induction. So which one of these describes a transformer? The answer is any number of adjacent coils in a transformer. It's often one adjacent coil, but it doesn't have to be. It can be multiple adjacent coils. So any number of adjacent coils could have a voltage induced in it if the magnetic field from the primary one cuts through the secondary coil. Six, increasing the inductance in an RL circuit will cause the time constant to do what? So write out your time constant formula and think about if I increase the inductance in an RL circuit, what will happen to the time constant? Will it remain unchanged? Will it increase? Will it reach its maximum value? Will it decrease? Here's your hint. This increases the amount of energy stored in the magnetic field. We're going to increase the amount of energy stored, what you think might happen. So the answer is it will increase. So you've got more magnetic energy stored, but the resistance in the circuit hasn't changed. So it's going to take longer to discharge the magnetic field or the current that magnetic field produces through that resistor. Seven, increasing the resistance. Okay, this stops the resistance we're increasing in the circuit will cause the time constant to do what? So again, write out your time constant formula. You can make up some values and substitute in and see what effect it has. So it will remain the same, drop to zero, increase or decrease. Here's your hint. This will slow the charge rate of the field, so it'll, that will change. So what will happen to the constant itself though? In this case, it will decrease the constant. So increasing resistance will decrease the time constant because it's in first relationship. Question eight. The component that creates a magnetic field in an LR circuit is the what? What's it called? A, the resistor. B, the inductor, C, the capacitor, or D, the voltage source, A, B, C, or D. So here's your hint. How is a magnetic field produced? Which of these components could do that? So the answer is B, an inductor. A resistor, 
will have a tiny little bit of magnetic field around it. That's not its purpose. An inductor, because it's coils of wire wrangled around together, that produces a lot. Magnet fields don't get created around capacitors, nor do voltage sources have them. Question 9. The current through a 9 millihenry inductor is reduced from 3.5 amps to 700 milliamps in 400 milliseconds. Determine the induced EMF. So we've got a change in current over a change in time. Can you remember the formula for calculating EMF? So here you hint, this is the formula. And here's our worked answer. So the voltage is the inductance in Henry's multiplied by the DI, change in current, divided by DD, the change in time. And for us, it's 900 times 10 to the minus 3, a change in current. We drop from 3.5 to 700 milliamps, so 3.5 minus 0.7. And we did that in 0 second to 400 milliseconds, or 400 times 10 to the minus 3. And if we multiply all of that out together and divide by the 400 times 10 to the minus 3, we'll end up 6.3 volts. Question 10. A 50 millihenry inductor has its current reduced from 1.5 amps to 0 in 7 milliseconds. Again, determine the induced voltage. So pause here. Here's your hint. Same equation as last time. And here's our answer. So again, inductance multiplied by change in current divided by change in time. You just need to know what we had. So 500, sorry, 50 times 10 to the minus 3. That takes care of our millihenries. 1.5 minus 0. So we went from 1.5 all the way down to 0. So it's 1.5 minus 0, which is 1.5. And we did it all in 7 milliseconds. So we went from 0 seconds to 7 milliseconds. So it's 0 minus 7.10 uh, to the minus 3. Divide those together, multiply by our 50 times 10 to the minus 3. And of course, we end up with 10.5 volts. So I hope you've enjoyed a little exercise, 10 questions in electromagnetism, lesson 5.